Welcome biology students to chapter 19 on fish out of Abeka Biology, God's Living Creation. I kind of like fish. It's kind of a fun, light-hearted chapter. It's not all that difficult. I hope you can learn a couple things about fish which uh, make them seem a little bit more interesting. And maybe one day you could maybe become a uh, aquarium worker or something like that and take what you know about fish and, and really use it. Maybe since you live in Florida, you already know a little bit about fish. So I guess we're going to find out. Let's dive right in, pun intended, and uh, uh, talk a little bit about fish. Starting with chapter 19.1 on bony fish. Fish characteristics. What are fish? Fish are cold-blooded, water-dwelling vertebrates with gills and scales. Scientists have classified approximately 28,000 species of fish. However, since only 3% of the ocean is actually explored, there could be many more species of fish that we're missing. And odds are, um, there are. Um, the studiers of fish, or sci fish scientists, are called itch biologists. And uh, this um, itch the, um, or ichthe, is um, a Greek prefix for fish. I'll just, of course, is a study of. Um, you ever see those um, fish on the back of uh, people's cars, like the Jesus fish, maybe with a little cross on the face? Um, it's called an ichthus. So it's it's strange, but um, it is the Greek word for fish. Fish have an amazing variety of characteristics, from the lionfish to the lungfish to the stingray. I mean, just an incredible amount of characteristics there. Uh, maybe you know about the lionfish with its with its unique like um, uh, fins, the lungfish, which can come out of the water, and the stingray, which of course um, is infamous for killing the crocodile hunter. Bony fish. Um, the bony fish class is called um, osteichthys, uh, meaning literally. Uh, fish and bone. Um, you may remember the word osteo, uh, studying things like osteoporosis, where your bones become more porous. That's what it means, osteoporosis. Bony fish make up about 95% of all known fish. The common ones, like the bass, catfish, cod, goldfish, and more. Fish are among the most nutritious foods and lend towards a healthy diet. They actually say that the Mediterranean diet is one which allows you to live the longest, and the Mediterranean diet um, is made up of mostly um, fish which are um, caught in the fresh waters uh, near Greece and um, Sicily, uh, among other places. And they're really healthy in um, various fats which clean the arteries out, and it, uh, among other things. They, of course, are high in proteins and low in carbohydrates. I think carbs um, are among the silent killers out there. We all love to eat our sugar, me included, believe me. Um, but it puts a lot of pressure on our body systems, uh, leading to things like diabetes and high blood pressure. Anyways, fish have three main body parts, a head, a trunk, this picture says thorax, I don't know why, um, and a tail. And those are the three main body parts. Fish also have five fins. I've included this diagram in your notes. Make sure that you highlight the fins. The dorsal fin is the one on top. The caudal fin is the one whereby the fish propels itself. The anal fin is, of course, beside the fish's anus. The pelvic fin um, is at the bottom of the fish, and the pectoral fin is the one on the side of the fish. And all those fins have the purpose of movement and help the fish to be able to navigate itself in the water. We're going to talk about some of these other terms like lateral line and gills in just a minute. Body features. 
Ordinarily, the gills are not visible because they're concealed beneath a large flat cover known as an opercula. Plural, it's known as an operculum. So you can see. It's fine. I tried to catch it. Don't don't worry about it. My wife's watching TV. I'm not even going to pause it. Uh, The opercula is uh, this uh, cover over over the fish's gills. And it's important, of course. If, if you are a fish, you don't want to get your gills snagged, and then you can't breathe. Like the skin of other animals, fish skin contains blood vessels, nerves, connective tissue. But unlike us, it contains mucus cells. Um, not a lot of mucus cells in our skin, right? If there was, it'd be kind of nasty. That's why fish have a slimy, slippery, odorous um, outside. It's because of these mucus cells. And really, mucus cells actually do a lot of good things for the fish, including allow them to be slick in movement through the water. Um, If they didn't have those mucus cells, their skin would be um, a little bit more tough, like ours. And that's just not good for, for navigating slick waters. Most bony fish also have a protective covering of small bony plates called scales, located just beneath the epidermis. There's lots of different kinds of scales. We're not going to go over them. Skeleton and muscles. A fish's backbone consists of many separate bone networks which support the body. These bones allow for um, cranial cavity, rib cage, fin support, lots of different things. The backbone is pretty incredible. Um, unlike other vertebrates, a fish's skeletal muscles are arranged in W-shaped bands called myomeres. And maybe you have gone to the store and you, you, you look at fish and you see these W-shaped band. They, they kind of look like W's or maybe M's. And you're like, huh, that's kind of strange. Why is, a, why is a fish going to uh, look like that? And it's because their skeletal muscles arrange themselves in such a unique fishy shape. And uh, it helps them um, to be able to move the way that they do, uh, having these W-shaped bands. And that's very unique amongst fish. And, and that's where we end off. And make sure that you do section review 19.1, numbers 1 through 4, and the thought provoker question number 7. I thought that was a pretty good question. And you're done this video. Pretty short, less than eight minutes long. I will see you guys tomorrow for 19.2. Bye-bye.